So I'd like to tell you about a paper we've just published in Embo Journal describing how wound inflammation exacerbates growth of preneoplastic cells and cancer cells indeed in vivo both in a fish model and in a model um, well in patients. This is the bunch of reprobates at the bottom that participated in, in the program. There's a lot of us. It's a collaboration between two groups in the UK, in Edinburgh and in Bristol, um, and also some clinicians in uh, uh, Denmark. And I'm the guy in the middle. Now, we began our studies in this model organism, zebrafish, which is absolutely outstanding for um, investigating early stages of cancer initiation um, and then slightly later progression stages because of its translucency. It's very genetically tractable but it's also see-through which means you can put the anaesthetized zebrafish larvae under the microscope and watch how cancer cells grow from the moment they're born and how they interact with um, other tissues and cells, for example the immune system. So we drive a human mutant oncogene, RAS, and other oncogenes, but RAS in this instance, in any lineage that we fancy. In this instance, um, uh, we're looking at um, melanocytes and goblet cells. And as well as RAS, we drive GFP, green fluorescent protein, so we can see these cells. And what we find is that very rapidly, as soon as these cells are born, um, Innate immune cells, first these red neutrophils and subsequently macrophages, are drawn to those preneoplastic cells. We know actually what attracts them, the signal, the damage signal that attracts them is hydrogen peroxide. So what happens if you superimpose on top of that um, uh, preneoplastic cell uh, growth in the epithelium an acute wound, for example a biopsy or a cancer surgery, you get this massive recruitment of innate immune cells to the wound site. And those neutrophils tends not to be so much macrophages. The neutrophils are distracted away from the acute wound site to nearby preneoplastic cells in the vicinity. And once there, they contribute, they deliver trophic signals, growth factor signals. In fact, we know one of these is prostaglandins, but there are others that we don't know. And that encourages these preneoplastic cells to grow much more than they otherwise would if there hadn't been a wound. Is that a heads up for what's going on in the clinic? Well, we think it is. We've been collaborating with um, uh, clinicians in Aarhus in Denmark who have a very well annotated database of um, melanomas from previous patients. They've interrogated those um, melanoma or tissue sections. They've been comparing melanomas that have a wound, that's to say are ulcerated, versus those that don't. So the uh, ulcer acts, if you like, much like it's a chronic wound, but it acts similarly to an acute wound um, in our zebrafish model in that it draws a neutrophilic influx. And that neutrophilic influx, you can see here these red cells, leads to more neutrophils um, being drawn to and associated with the um, cancer cells now, no longer preneoplastic cells as they were in the zebrafish model, but these are cancer cells, draws neutrophils to them. And that, um, just as in the fish model, leads to those uh, um, cancer cells proliferating more than they would if there hadn't been um, a wound. And of course they can interrogate their databases and it turns out that that neutrophilic influx um, is associated with very bad patient prognosis. Um, so there you have uh, a heads up from zebrafish illustrating something that is almost certainly going on in some human cancers.